Frank and Living Enterprises back again with another problem. My life is full of them. This time it's actually my 2002 Ford Taurus. So I keep getting these OBD2 codes pop up on the screen when the check engine light goes off. I'm posting them right about now. And so I actually cleared it last night or early, early this morning. On my, uh, I was at the apartment downtown trying to come back here and I got it to go away, but they came back on. So what I did down there was clean the MAF sensor and then the car kept dying, which was an issue with the connection with the hose, which I'll show you in a minute. And basically, I think it just needs to be recleaned. I don't think I did a good enough job. So you'll need three things for this, or two, possibly three. First thing, uh, I got the CRC brand, Mass Airflow. Uh, sensor cleaner from AutoZone. It was like maybe like 11, 12 bucks. I don't remember. I just throw on the credit card. Uh, I need it. Uh, next thing you'll need is this. Uh, either a straight slot screwdriver or this. This is a nut driver. It's 5 16 inch. And it fits perfectly over the nut that I have to loosen in order to take the hose off. The third thing, which is kind of optional, is of course, if you see many times on this channel, a can of patience. So, let's go fix things. Step one is open your can of patience and take a sip. So for the next part, step two, you just need the nut driver. So I'm gonna basically loosen this here and take this off. So your air filter's inside here in order, you're gonna to have to release this. So this one here is actually already released. It's supposed to be like that. Pop on this side, you pop that one. And then you go ahead and just kinda of give it a wiggle to take it off. So I did notice too that my air filter is kind of dirty and I beat it on the curb to get rid of some of the stuff, but I'm actually going to take this inside and clean it with a vacuum cleaner. So for this next step, you just go ahead and loosen this. These are kind of, when they start to kind of wiggle it, um, also you're going to have to disconnect this by the way. Here's this thing on the side, you just kind of, you pull down and it comes right up. Just like butter. So the sensor down here, it came off real nicely the other day, however it's going to be trouble this time. So with that done, I can go ahead and loosen this here the rest of the way. And pull it out just like that. That right there is the mass airflow sensor. This here is the thing that we're going to have to clean. So. So when I did it early this morning, I had gone ahead and used the nozzle. I'm not going to use it this time. I'm just going to take it and spray it. Make sure it's soaked, like dripping wet. And let it leak out onto the driveway, which my brother will not be happy about, but that's okay. He won't know because he doesn't, he's not subscribed to my channel, so. So I brought it back inside. I'm just going to take paper towels and give it like a nice uh, wipe down. Just make sure you kind of get all sides of it. You don't have to be you know, make it look like brand new, but I didn't do this before, and I think that might be part of the why, uh, part of the reason why it, uh, the codes came back up again when I parked in the driveway. Uh, I didn't, because by doing this, you're removing some of the debris and dust and gunk or whatever you want to call it from the sensor, and without doing that, I mean, just getting it wet, I mean, it just makes the gunk kind of pile up. It move and pile up, so it's not a the best fix. I'd say go ahead and wipe it down like that. Let it dry completely. I don't think I gave it enough time to fully dry yesterday either. That might be part of the problem. So I'm going to let it dry completely and put it in front of a fan. Oh yeah! I'm not saying be lazy, I'm just saying work smart, not hard. And there you go. If I'm not mistaken, that right there is the actual sensor itself. Looks like a resistor. Could be right, it could be in here, but you know, I'm not a mechanic, I'm IT, so... If it ran Windows 10, maybe I'd know, but it doesn't, so. So I did a brief cleaning of the air filter with a vacuum and reseated it, make sure it's all the way in there, nice and flush around all four edges. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this, but something to note. <clears throat> so when I did this yesterday, uh, the car kept dying after a little while, and I turned it on and I heard a hissing noise. It's because this here was loose and off. It's the exact same as this one. So you just use the nut driver to tighten it, but with it being off, the engine doesn't get enough oxygen to go ahead and, uh, well, keep going. It just ends up dying. Just like if you have a severe lack of oxygen, you will die, assuming you're a human being. So I'm going to go ahead and reattach this now. So if you opted to use a flathead screwdriver, you wouldn't need this, but I need a key just to 
fry it over the top. So apparently one of my clips is broken, but I'm just going to go ahead and clamp this back down. Clamp. Make sure this is tight enough. Now retighten this. So I'm going to go ahead and start the car now. As you can see, check engine light on O2 Taurus is over there. It's clear. Uh, no, never mind. It's still there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear those codes from the ECU, the electronic control unit. Basically the car's motherboard. The the, the brain of the car. I'm going to make it forget about that for a couple seconds and run it again and see if it pops back up. So I still smell fumes, but um, in order to clear the codes, uh, that right there is the OBD2 port, and I have an adapter in there that goes ahead and reads the codes, kind of like the mechanic. When he goes and diagnoses your car, he'll plug something into there, just like this, but I can do it on my phone. So I can still smell fumes from out here now, not just in the car. It sounds like something's leaking again. That yeah, hissing noise is not good. That's coming from somewhere here, so I'm going to have to reseat these and retighten them again. So to me, it sounds like it's definitely leaking from here. Um, I'm thinking it's just not on all the way here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and turn the car off, loosen it, put it on better, and reseat it, and then tighten it. So I noticed as I'm loosening it, I think that's the problem right there. The metal clamp has seemed to come off the edge of the hose, which is here, and not completely around where it should be. So I'll loosen this, put it around there, and then pop it on uh, the rest of the way. So basically I loosened this almost all the way, I loosened this all the way and opened it up, and then was able to push down and jiggle it on all the way. So it is now all the way on, so now I'll put the hose and try again. So the program I'm going to use for this is called Torque, T-O-R-Q-U-E, T-O-R-Q. There is light version, I have the paid version, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. You have to have, by the way, you have to have Bluetooth and uh, GPS on. And I'm going to go ahead, once all those are uh, solid, go ahead and hit fault codes. Now, I'm going to go at the top before I, I scan. Oops. So those are the fault codes that were on there before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this, and I'm going to hit clear faults, clear fault code. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to wipe them from the ECU. It takes a little time. So after it clears it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Sorry for the poor, uh, the poor quality and the reflection. I'm going to hit fault codes again. I'm going to hit there. It's going to take a minute to request the fault codes. So now I'm down to one. Hey, so that's, that's progress. So now let me see how to fix this. High temperature, web lookup, and then we'll see what it says. So it says it's likely a defective wire. Yay, more problems. Uh, so I'm an idiot. Uh, you know that little thing I was having trouble undoing, that little clip? I forgot to plug that back in. A moron. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to rerun the codes again. Um, oh, that's right. i got to go back. Fault codes. Hit it. And hopefully none of them will show up because the uh, check engine light is off, so it should be good now. And... Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Not bad for a do-it-yourself mechanic, huh? Learning as I go. But, um, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like this video and give it a thumbs up, like it. Uh, it's about time now for me to go ahead and celebrate by washing my hands and uh, re-upping on my patience.